Well, what is dead rail? Uh, it's just a fancy term for battery-powered locomotives. Traditionally, you have all sorts of power in the rail, and you can drive uh, some high-powered locomotives. In larger scales, it's been available for some time. In N scale and HO scale, it's a bit more of a challenge because of the size of the batteries involved to give you decent run times. So this is going to be a technical video. I'm going to show you an install of the dead rail or battery powered system that I've installed in this particular locomotive that you can see running here. It may not be the system you would choose, but I think it was the best for me. So I will start by going over some of the features that were important to me, and then I will do an actual install so that you can see everything that's involved. So if this sounds interesting, I know it's kind of geek level stuff here, but uh, stay tuned and hopefully uh, we can have some fun. Well, why even consider battery power for a model railroad when uh, power in the track is so easily available and effective? For me, it was a factor of track maintenance. I live in the desert. There's just a constant layer of dust on everything. No matter how many times I would clean the track and no matter what substance or mechanical means I would use, when I wanted to start operating the trains, I always knew in the back of my mind that one of the locomotives is going to get stuck somewhere and maybe a lot of different places if I hadn't been super diligent in cleaning the track. And although I don't have a really big layout, cleaning the track is really a problem when you have rolling stock laying around and you've got turnouts and switches in hard to reach sections. Um, landscaping gets removed by accident when you're uh, rubbing on the track. So, to be honest with you, whenever I would turn the layout on, I just had that feeling in my stomach, okay, well, I'm going to try and run some trains, but uh, they're going to be starting and stopping, and, and it's going to be frustrating. So, I want to put an end to that. When I show up at the layout and I want to run some trains, I want to run some trains. I don't want to be cleaning everything first. There are about five systems that I'm aware of for battery-operated locomotives. You may know of others, and if you do, put a comment below so that uh, others can research that. But I was aware of Blue Rail, Tam Valley, CVP Airware, Proto Throttle, which is a, a more of a recent, uh, and that's a real fancy pants controller, and SCAB. And I decided to go with the Stanton Radio Cab system, Neil Stanton's system, and I'll explain why. First of all, I did not want to use my phone or Bluetooth or anything like that to run my trains. I want a dedicated throttle. Second of all, I really would like to go wireless. My NCE system is all on the wire, so you have to plug it in uh, as you move around the layout. And the challenge in HO, you can see how small this little locomotive is in the little coal car here. The challenge for HO is how can you get a battery big enough that provides continuous power for your locomotives in a similar way that the power in the rail would do, but yet at the same time fit in the small equipment that you may have for HO. So... For me, I thought Neil Stanton came up with a very innovative approach. What he did is, using a smaller battery, he developed a power supply that will recharge the battery so that you don't have to carry as large a uh, LiPo cell around and it's easier to fit it in the equipment. Now, since I already have a complete NCE system, that means I have pulse width modulated power in my rail already. It's, you know, 13-ish type volts. You can't put your voltmeter on it and check it because it's a different type of power. So, I already have that in the rail. And Neil's system allows a very, very low-touch way of providing power. And essentially the battery will constantly recharge itself as it's riding around and finding good 
uh, contact on the rail. So if you have at least one clean section on your track, you never have to pull the battery out. You don't have to plug it into a charger. You don't have to do anything like that. The recharging and maintenance of the battery takes care of itself. And I thought that was a, a very brilliant solution for people like me that already have DCC and up and running on my layout. Uh, another thing I really liked about the throttle here is that without looking at it, I can operate direction and throttle. And again, I wanted wireless system. So this is fairly simple system. Now it will not do everything as far as addressing every single CV address like some of the systems. But to be honest with you, I don't use most of that stuff anyway. Um, I really have turned off all of the sounds on my locomotives anyway, although SCAB does come with sound uh, decoders if you want, but I, I don't need that. It's cute for a little bit, but actually it gets annoying after a while for me. So I just want to hear the trains, uh, their, whatever sound they naturally make. And I tend to fill my room with um, sound effects from a set of discs that have actual railroad sounds that fill the room or i just put some classical music on i want my railroading to be relaxing and so far for me i haven't heard any of the sound systems that have been anything more than kind of cute at the beginning and then annoying after a while now i know that's probably not your case but that's just for me so i really don't need a lot of bells and whistles i just want the locomotives to work smoothly and I can do some operating without any frustration. So I think that's why I chose the S-Cab or Stanton system. Uh, your mileage may differ. Very quickly, how do you start it up? Well, with a magnet, I hit the switch to on and fire up the cab. Loco number six, enter and we're ready to go. Well, let's fire up the soldering iron and get busy. The way these components arrive, the battery already has a connecting plug, which will plug into the power supply, and the NCE controller. These are all pre-wired and pre-attached. So really this whole system simply needs to be connected to the locomotive. So let's start there. Here's our circuit diagram for reference. Here's the little locomotive and I've already removed the cab and some other things. So I need to take off the small circuit board on top here. I don't need this controller anymore. The S cab comes with its own NCE compatible controller and we are going to keep track of the two wires for the motor and the two wires for the power pickup on the track. So let's get busy. So the little decoder is removed. There's the little keep alive cap that this uh, locomotive comes with. So here are the wires that I've labeled the pickup on the right hand side or the starboard side of the locomotive on the left or port side here and our two motor wires here. I'm going to be putting all the wiring connections up here in the cab on the locomotive and I will not be using this little circuit board as we said before. So I cut a little piece of styrene and put a couple of holes on the side and pressed pressed it down so that it would span between these two posts and provide a little platform so that any of the wiring that enters here will not hang down and rub on the flywheel on the motor and basically get us into trouble. Not sure the camera will pick this up, but that little styrene platform, I sprayed that black, that's going to go here in the locomotive cab. And then I carefully taped off both ends of the wiring here so that I could spray the middle of the wires black. And I'm hoping that that will help 
to uh, not make them quite as annoying as they bridge between this car here and the locomotive. And obviously we need a small hole in the front of this hopper. And I decided to make not just a hole, but a little U-shaped cutout on the back of the cab so that I can lift this thing off. So let's attempt our first bench test. So we have the power supply here, batteries plugged in. Here is our decoder and these two are pre-wired together. These are the two little magnetic switches. And so I've got the two power leads, these gray leads coming off the power supply. These are temporarily clipped onto the power pickups on the chassis. The orange wire and the gray wire send power back to the two motor leads here. So I don't have lights or anything else like that hooked up. And so we're going to do a quick test. You can see I turned the power cab on. Let me turn it off. So the way it comes, you just turn it on. And I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I guess you can't see. There it is. Location 3 or cab three, that's kind of the stock. So I'm going to take the wand and uh, you can't see it, but the little blue LED is lit and that means that the power supply is all fired up. So I'm going to introduce just a tiny bit of forward motion to the motor and see if our connections are all correct. Whoa, there we go. Woohoo! And reverse without unplugging everything. Yep. I don't want to short anything out here. You can see that wire just fell right off. That's fabulous. So, bench test is 100% successful. I'm going to power off. There we go. Using the wand, you see how it works. Power on. And power off. Well, as long as I'm bench testing, I hooked up um, an LED that I had. I've got a 4.6 K ohm resistor in series, and the power supply is turned on. And I'm going to press function zero, which should be the forward headlight for NCE controllers. Let's see. Bingo. We got a light. And I'm in forward and that should go off when I go into reverse and back on when I go forward and off when I toggle zero on and off very cool it works but for now I'm not going to hook up the LED I'm going to leave those wires in the little uh, coal car and that'll be a project for another day getting the right size light and kind of getting it positioned correctly in the cab well there's the gear all packed into this coal car here i've got my four leads here that will go up into the cab and i've got my coal load here that will hide it somewhat. Okay, everything's wired up and protected in the cab. I went with the motor and the power pickup and I'm going to save the LED fun for later. 
Let me just be totally honest and say when you're working with 24 or 26 gauge wire like this, it's not the most fun that you've ever had, let me put it that way. All right, time for one last bench test here. Give it a little throttle. I haven't programmed any momentum or anything at this point. Just forward and back. Alright. Well, let's see what it looks like on the layout. I want to see how it handles the turns and some turnouts. Well, I'll show you a close up here. This is the coal load that I made to cover the electronics. There's a tiny hole here that I drilled so that when the electronics come on I can see the tiny blue LED. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. So inside I'll show you what the electronics look like. Here's the uh, coal load. There's the underside. I used Bondo and epoxy and then added the coal. Well, let's test out the system here. Let's put our little Plymouth switcher to work. Pulling a cut of coal cars here, coming out of the Conklin Yard. On a small layout like mine, I love these small locos because you really feel like they're having to work to get the job done. I like that. Pulls nicely through all the turnouts. Even at slow speed, very smooth. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If you're thinking about a battery operated system, uh, dead rail, and hopefully it was helpful to see my install and to hear the reasons why I chose the system that I did. One reason I don't use sound on the locomotives is I like the clicky clack and I can't really hear that with a loud noise coming from the locomotive. Well, this cut is leaving the yard so I better get busy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.